Oh, before we get started, first I'd like to welcome Janine Fenton of the American Society of Civil Engineers who has offered to do our webinar presentation for us today. As I've noted, this webinar will be available as an archive by tomorrow morning on our website, both the recording and the slides. Um, if you have any questions for Janine after the webinar, I believe her uh, contact information is at the end of the slides, or you can contact me and I can pass those along. Uh, Janine, if you're ready, I think we're ready to go. Okay, thank you. Um, it's great to be here, and we're going to be doing a webinar today, Dream Big to Build a Better World, and actually we're going to talk about the Build a Better World part first, and then I'll explain why we are going to be dreaming big to build our better world. And there I am. I am the Senior Manager of Pre-College Outreach for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Usually, if you're dealing with a professional engineering society, they don't usually call it education. They tend to call it outreach because um, when it comes to the kindergarten through 12th grade realm, we're not professional educators. Um, we are reaching out. We're hoping to generate some excitement, et cetera, for you. Um, in addition, I'm actually a certified library associate in the state of Maryland. And Maryland has a training program for people who are um, who have college degrees, but not necessarily the MLS degree. And I worked for seven years for the Hartford County Public Libraries in Maryland, and so I really know where you're coming from, and my certification is still up to date. We do have a poll here, and I'm going to ask you this very basic question, what is civil engineering? So um, I guess I don't know how to operate the poll. I'm hoping that that's something that I think, I think we're having you um, type in. Is that correct? Yep, correct. You could just put your answers down there in the chat box. Um, a couple people have mentioned to me that they're not uh, seeing very many lines in the chat box. If you hover over the line right above it, you can stretch it up a little higher so you can see everybody's answers. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and type down there in that chat box what you think civil engineering is. I know sometimes there's a little bit of a delay while people are, are doing that typing. Yes, and make sure everybody, when you, uh, I see some answers that I don't think anyone else is seeing, so make sure you change the send to all participants so that everyone can see it. So some of the answers that people are typing <laughs> that they sent just to me um, is engineering for society, a uh, person who works on roads and bridges, um, someone who plans cities. Oh, that one's to all participants. Good job, Pam. <laughs> Okay, so I see a bunch of really great answers here. Um, when I ask this question of students, we have gotten, um, you're the polite engineers. <laughs> we have gotten, you're the ones who've been around since the Civil War. For a lot of students, they have no idea who civil engineers are. And civil engineering, in terms of like where that term came from, it actually goes back to Roman times. And it refers to being the opposite of a military engineer. So we are the ones who dealt with the civilian population. I like to tell people that it's about civilization, the things that connect us and let us live in safe, healthy communities. So you've got the things like planning cities and engineering buildings and bridges and roads. Um, also, we have clean water. How do you get clean water to a bunch of houses? How do you get dirty water away from it? If you turn on your tap to take a shower or a drink, that's civil engineering. Driving on roads and bridges through synchronized traffic lights, that's civil engineering. There's also utility engineering that can be a part of it, mass transit. Eventually, spaceports are going to be a part of civil engineering as well. So with the summer reading thing of Build a Better World, it's a great time to talk about civil engineering. We're also going to be talking about engineering activities in general and what makes something an engineering activity, especially versus a science activity. And in a science experiment, everyone is supposed to get the same result. 
everything can be replicated. If you do the same experiment using the same materials, you're going to get the same result. If you don't get the same result, then somebody has made a mistake. In an engineering activity, the results can be different as people come up with new solutions, which can actually be great for a librarian who might not feel like that they're that comfortable with a STEM topic. There is no reason to get the right answer. Engineers take what they know about science and math to do their work, and engineering is very definitely where STEM comes together. It's not just in the middle of that acronym STEM just to make it easier to say. It's where science, technology, and math all come together. And it's also about being a creative problem solver. If you, you engineers usually have a problem that they need to solve, how do you get people from one side of the river to the other? How do you get how do you connect roads within a community so that people can get from one place to another? But then there are constraints. There are limitations. In an engineering activity, it might be, well, we've only got 45 minutes to do this, so you're only going to have 45 minutes to do this. It can also be a constraint like what equipment you're allowed to do it with. And as I said before, there's an open-ended solution. So we had talked about maybe doing an engineering activity during the webinar. And I was like, well, I'm really not sure what to do. And then as I was pulling it together, I thought, oh, there's one that we could all do. If you just take a piece of paper, I'm sure you're sitting in your office and you've got a piece of paper and just hold it up by the short end. It's probably flopping down, just kind of draping gracefully downward. Now, if you take that same piece of paper and you crease it one time lengthwise, and then you hold it up again at that same point, now it's actually sticking out. You change the strength of the paper just by making that fold. You've increased its strength. So engineers know how to take a principle like that and apply it to solving a problem. In this particular problem, you can take a single sheet of paper like we we have in front of us, and you can add additional folds. And so you can take a sheet of paper and stretch it across a pile of two books, you know, two columns of books. You've made a very simple paper bridge. And start finding out how strong you can make it by piling on pennies or washers as weights. And I will tell you that it's amazing how many weights you can add to this. The girl in the picture that you see here currently has 550 washers on a single sheet of paper. There's no tape, there's no glue, and in fact, we keep an eye on it to make sure that the weights are being added to the unsupported part of the bridge. This particular one collapsed at about 573 washers. So I'm going to talk a little bit about resources that are available for librarians. First of all, talking a little bit about how do you find presenters? How do you find engineers who can come in and talk about what they do? And then also about finding activities to do. These are some of the things that I did when I was working for the Harvard County Public Library to find STEM presenters. And one of the things I like to remind people is that you already have STEM professionals, you already have engineers using your library. I will put in the caveat, of course, unless you're a very rural library where, you know, the professionals are more congregated close to a city or town, um, you may not have as broad a pool. But the fact of the matter is that civil engineers tend to be located everywhere because if you've got roads in your community, if you've got a community water source, things like that, you're going to have engineers nearby in order to maintain those things. So you can actually recruit them, you know, maybe put up a flyer in your library or through a newsletter. You can, of course, make connections with your local school system and their science teachers. If they can't get, do a presentation themselves, they may know of some people. 
You can also connect in with any local colleges or universities. Again, those are places where they, they may know of a network of people who could help you. And in addition, you can look for local hobby groups in things like astronomy, rocketry, rocks, minerals, all that kind of stuff. Now, how do you find a civil engineer? So on the left side of the screen, there's a box around www.asce.org. That is my organization. And as I said, civil engineers are located in cities and towns throughout the United States and in fact across the world. And ASCE.org is our main website. There's a green arrow pointing to a tab called Membership and Communities. Don't click on Membership Communities, just sort of hover over it and the drop down box will come up and you can see that there's another box surrounding regions, sections, and branches. That will bring you to an interactive map of the United States. You can click on your state, and then you can click on a city or a town, and it will give you the name of the ASCE officers in your area. The branch section or the branch or section president or chair is a good place to contact. Also, we have younger members. The younger member chair is another person to contact and say, could you help us out? And of course, you can also contact me, Janine Fenton, jfenton at asce.org. This is a listing of other engineering and professional societies. Some of these have extremely active outreach branches, just like ASCE does. I mean, it's my job to connect engineers with their local communities. Some of them are not as active as ASCE is. And of course, even within ASCE, I might be trying to contact you with a section or a branch that just doesn't have a very active pre-college outreach group. But more often than not, I can find somebody for you. Now, once you've found someone, you do want to vet them a little bit. If they're a new presenter, if they have never given presentations before, or they're very limited in their experience, you know, you probably want to plan the program together. As a librarian, you have experience about the audience and you can tell people what to expect. You also want to set some clear time limits. Some people, especially hobbyists, will go on forever about what they're interested in. Keep the focus on the activity or end by showing the presenter's unusual collection. You want to make sure that your audience, especially if you're dealing with children and teens, that they're actively engaged. You really don't want to have the talking head syndrome. But if you want to do programming for adults, Again, the civil engineering societies, we've got people who talk about what they call history and heritage, so they can talk and give a lecture about an historic icon in your area. So they're also very good for adult audiences and adult lectures as well. With children, of course, you want to allow them to move around, to experiment, and be able to touch any object. A few cautions. Some scientists and engineers need some help explaining information on an age-appropriate basis. This is one of my jobs at ASCE is I do give our members training on this, but we have over 155,000 members. I'm not personally able to get to every single one of them. You can practice with them and if you find a dud, don't give up. You might be able to work with that speaker to improve for the future, or at the very least, you'll have a better idea how to pre-screen. 
I'm expecting that you may have some questions, and I feel like we can go back and answer some of the questions at the end of the presentation. So please do feel free to type things into the chat box. So where do you find engineering activities? Well, this is where we get to the dream big side of this. And one of the things that I've been working on for the past year or so is we are developing a new IMAX film called Dream Big, Engineering Our World. It's going to premiere in February of 2017. And I'm now going to do something that you should never do. We are going to practice sharing my screen and we're going to show the Dream Big trailer for you. It's about two minutes, and hopefully we will not have any technical glitches. All right, and I hope I'm doing this right. We'll soon find out. <laughs> Do you see the Dream Big Sneak Peek trailer? I see flowers. Nope. <laughs> All right. Um, This is why we should never do things like this without practicing first. <laughs> we did not follow the engineering process very well here. <laughs> because now I'm trying to figure out how I get back to the main webinar. Uh, so if you're trapped, if you just uh, take your cursor and hover it towards the top of the screen, the little menu should pop down. Okay, I'm going to try one other thing. I'm going to share monitor two because I have two. Ah, yes. Open. If that if that doesn't work, um, if it's a URL, you can send it to me and I can share it. Um, do you yep. see big now? That's it. <laughs> So I'm going to stop sharing. And, you know, I realize people are going, well, we're a library. We're not, we don't have our next theaters. You know, what point does this have? Um, well, the film is a lot more than a film. It is something that many engineering societies, including ASCE, are basing outreach activities around. And Within the film, there will be a lot of different kinds of engineering shown, a lot of different kinds of engineers shown, 
And in 2018, this DVD will be out and available and can be shown in libraries. But in addition to the 45-minute IMAX film, we are preparing 50 hands-on engineering activities in a variety of disciplines. We've got 15 lesson plans for school teachers. We've got 11 web videos on a variety of topics, including wind engineering, how to bring clean water to people, a number of different topics. We've got planning guides for how to plan um, an engineering festival, how to bring in engineers, a lot of different engineers to a venue. And we will be doing community screenings in non-IMAX areas in 2018. You can find these resources at discovere.org slash dream big. And again, this webinar is going to be recorded so that you can get all of these URLs and find all these this information. Discover E used to be called the National Engineers Week Foundation, and they are the organization that started the concept of having a National Engineers Week every year in February. It's a coalition of over 100 engineering firms and societies. It provides activities and programs that enhance engineering, and they have over 420 activities in their database. So 50 of these are these new Dream Big activities that we've compiled, but they have a number of other activities as well. You can also find more civil engineering activities at ASCEville.org. And that is a site that was developed for us a few years ago. And in the information for educators and parents, there are links to civil engineering activities, many of them that were developed originally for um, PBS. And now it's time for the questions. So I'm looking here to see if there's anything that has been posted in chat. People are asking about the presenter's name and email. Um, actually, the last slide here in the presentation, there's my name and my email address. So you can always contact me. And the question is, can you print these slides off? And I think that starting tomorrow, people are able to do that. And somebody wants to know about an example of some of the activities on the Discover E site. So we have an activity where you use, um, it's called Windy City Tower, and you use paper and tape and a washer and the idea is that you have to support this washer, and it's, it's a large washer. You support the washer um, something like 14 inches above the ground, and then you use a box fan to see how close you can get it to the fan, you know, before it gets blown over. It does need to be able to support the washer in a freestanding state. We've got activities about building domes. We have one on highway interchanges. We've got an activity on LIDAR. We've got one on lasers. We have in the teacher guide something where you can make a greeting card. And um, you know, one of those ones where when you open it, it makes a sound or it buzzes somehow. We've got one called pipe maze where you use tubes to um, take water from one place to another. We have a marble run. We have a bobsled racer. As you can see, I can start naming these, lots of them. If you don't mind, actually, let me, before I share my screen, I will see if I can bring up discovere.org, and then we'll, um, I, I can go back to sharing my screen. And now I know I'm sharing monitor two. And so here is the Discover E website. 
there are programs, activities, media assets, and under the activities, the list of the various and sundry ones that I was just naming. If we go back to the cool content and activities for Discover E, you know, this is where they have all 420 of their different kinds of engineering activities listed. So I'm going to stop sharing and go back to being able to read things. Um, are there activities for all different ages or are they all geared towards one age group? There are activities for early elementary through high school and you can filter by age group. Somebody wants to know if they can organize a public screaming being in a non-IMAX area of the film in 2018 and the answer is yes. Um, if, if you go onto that Dream Big website through Discover E, there is a way to contact Gwen Hearn, who is the outreach coordinator for Dream Big, and there's a com community screening form that can be filled out. And that's one of the fun things about Dream Big is our objective for ASCE and leading the charge and getting this film made was that we do want to disseminate the message about how fun engineering is in as many places as we possibly can. Somebody wants to know if there's activities for adults as well as kids. And I, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head what we have that is more directed towards adults through Dream Big or through Discover E. Um, but definitely by connecting with the engineering societies, you can see if they have somebody who is a public speaker. Because there are things, as you know, like science cafes, where people can come in and they can talk about their research. What are they doing um, in their lab or, or um, for their work? Or as I said about historic icons in your area, that might not be as appealing to younger kids because it's more of a lecture, but definitely, you know, the people are very engaging when they're talking to adults. And do these activities include a cost estimate for the materials needed? I don't think that we included a cost estimate because we don't always know how big the group size is going to be. But you can take a look at it and you know whether or not you've got scissors on hand and paper. There are a few things that were a little bit more unusual where we did say this thing costs $60 and you can order it from this company. All right, are there any other questions that, Ian, that you might be seeing that maybe aren't posted here? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that uh, that covered everything. Um, I'm making sure that there weren't any that went straight to me, but I think you've got all of them. As I said, you know, please feel free to contact me. Um, if you're not sure how to use our website, I, I thought, well, should I give them the website information? But, you know, for some people, you know, it's really easy to just click your way through the website and then you're in direct contact with the people immediately in your area instead of having to go through me where I have to get your email, look up the information, send something back to you, you know, eliminate the middleman. man. Um, excellent. So um, I don't want to end just yet. I'll give you guys a couple more seconds if you want to think of any more questions. While you're doing that and typing them, uh, just a reminder that this is a monthly webinar series. Um, we are moving to two webinars a month because so many people want to share great information with their local libraries. Uh, so next month we will be having a presentation that's a really nice continuation of this one um, from Kelly and Lacante, who's here at SSI, uh, about some hands-on activities you can be doing during Build a Better World uh, next year's summer reading. Uh, we will also be having a webinar about how to participate in the 2017 total solar eclipse. Um, so make sure that you check out our website to get the registration info for those. Um, it looks like we did have, see I babbled long enough, something else popped up here. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody commenting about um, bringing in an engineer who had, you know, it sounds like fun. <laughs> I, wa I want to see these things. But it is much more focused, as I said, for high school and college age, but it does um, gear up nicely for adults as well. Yeah, and that's a really good point, too, about, um, just like Janine said, getting community members to bring their fun stuff in. Um, you don't need to uh, purchase all of these amazing things at your library if you think it's just going to be for a one-off program. People like to share their stuff. They love to share their stuff. Uh, simply putting a flyer up in the library asking, do you have cool tech you want to share? You'll get so many programs that way, and all you have to do is sit back and watch, um, which is fun for you guys. <laughs> And kind of related to that, um, you know, there is this whole maker movement and, you know, making is very connected to engineering. Again, that sort of notion of taking technology and repurposing it in a different way, um, the open-ended solution. So somebody typed email, please. And my email is jfenton at asce.org. It's there on the screen. and. You know, just let me know if you have any other questions about that. Needed. All right. If there are no further questions, um, thank you guys all so much for joining us. Thank you, Janine, for sharing all that amazing information. I didn't know a lot of that either, so this is great for everybody. Um, and again, if any of you, I saw some of you popping in and out, uh, must have been poor internet connections. This will be posted by tomorrow morning um, at www.startatlibraries.org under webinars. Um, and again, if you have any questions for Janine or myself, feel free to contact us at any time. <coughs> Thank you all. Thanks, Janine. <laughs>